what happens when your grand adventure turns into a nightmare. I start shouting for help and blood coming out from my mouth. With actual footage from their ordeal, four Singaporeans relive their troubles abroad. We instantly froze. I knew that my life was in danger. I tell to my maker, you know, like, just get it done with just, 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 just let me go. How can they survive when an exciting trip goes horribly wrong? In this episode, a young adventurer bitten by the travel bug embarks on his first trip to Cambodia. He, well, he checked in, he then left to explore around the city. We, he wasn't seen again. But what's waiting around the corner is about to shatter the lives of all that he loves. The orthopedic surgeon, he told us if worse comes to us, he will have to amputate his legs. When I think of my son Jason, headache. <laughs> we love him, but he's very naughty. In fact, he always loved the adventure, the travelling, because I, we always fly him during school holiday. So he get this feeling of fun. You know? We always like to travel alone. We always discourage that. We, we, we try our best to tell him, go with friends. He always say, oh, mommy, I'm grown up already. Don't worry, don't worry. Of course, as a parent, we always worry, right? So we said, promise us when you land, just every night, just every night, text, you know, say, mommy, daddy, I'm fine. That's all we need. When Jason was 24 years old, he just finished his NS and he decided to take a break. He told us he's going to spend a few days in Cambodia. When Jason landed, he did um, text us and he said, Mommy, uh, I landed safely and I'm staying at this um, ban top banana guest house. After that, he did post in, uh, in his Facebook and he said, five minutes in Cambodia and I'm lost. We thought it was nothing, he was just being Jason. After that, we waited for Jason to contact us. But for a few days, we still waited and no news. And we wonder why. What happened to him? We went all the way to the airport the day that he was supposed to come back. They said, yes, his name was there, but no show. That was the we started to really, really panic. I told my uh, one of my niece, I said, please help me put in the Facebook and tell the friends that um, something wrong with Jason, we need to help, uh, we need help to find him. I, I was definitely shocked. I told myself, let's get a group together. Uh, people that worked with him before, you know, had, you know, partied with him, people that he knew cared about him. Yeah, so I got a Facebook uh, messenger group going. They started saying, okay, I'm gonna get in touch with this guy. I'm gonna ask this friend. I think some of them had friends in Cambodia also that they reached out to and see what we could do. Jason also has a church friend who wanted to help. And he contacted his friend working in Cambodia and that person was Craig. So I, I first got that Facebook message from Pastor Vincent Lun around 8pm. I jumped on my bike and immediately went down to the hostel where he'd been staying apparently.
He, well, he checked in. He uh, put his bags into the dorm. Oh. He then left to go and hire a motorbike and explore around the city. We, he wasn't seen again. After having lost contact with him, right, for like one whole week, you know, we had this gut feeling that something must be wrong. And that night alone, we also decided we're going to fly tomorrow to, to Cambodia. I headed over to the hospital. I said, can I please look at his medical records? And I noticed a death certificate. ជាមួយដែលមិនអាចបំផ្លិចបានកំបានឃើញឡានមួយគ្រឿងនិងមតូមួយគ្រឿងគឺមតភាពជីក្នុងល្បឿនមួយដែលដែលល្មមប៉
He had significant burns which had been very much left uh, partially or improperly treated. He had multiple fractures which were still left um, untreated. It was uh, very frightening. I almost did not think that he might not be able to make it because of the air, the pressure, all this and that. Once we landed, uh, there was another ambulance waiting for us and straight we go to SGH. At SGH, we met Dr. Paul, who was the orthopedic surgeon. He told us he will try his best to save Jason's legs. But worst come to us, it will have to be amputation. And oh my god, my god, oh my god. In 2014, my son Jason went to Cambodia on a solo backpacking trip. And on the first day, he, he got into an accident. Terrible, terrible accident. In 2014, uh, Jason Lin was uh, transferred from Cambodia after a motorcycle accident. Uh, he was one of the most complicated cases that I had to deal with. He was disoriented. He was actually in the surgical intensive care. He had other injuries to deal with. He had extensive burns to both his limbs. And on top of that, he had a, a long-standing dislocation of both his knees, which had not been uh, adequately treated at that point of time. I had to prepare uh, his family for what may potentially be the worst outcome, which was amputation of his uh, lower limbs. Jason was in the hospital for 44 days. Oh God, the longest time of our life. So I, when I woke up, I opened my eyes to two tired and very worried parents. And I asked my mom, like, Mom, where am I? And my mom said, Yo, you're in SGH. I said, what happened? I said, you got into an accident. I was like, why? It just really felt like a dream. Like I was just watching a, a you know, a movie from a first person view. That's, that's what it felt like. The last thing I remember was like uh, riding on a road safe and sound and then nothing, right? Pitch black darkness. It's as if I fell asleep. In this sleep, I actually had dreams. So I remember waking up, like, I mean, just opening up my eyes, I remember pulling out my tubes. And then I felt freedom. As I, you know, got more and more lucid, I just realised that my life had just changed. The worst case scenario the doctor told us would be to amputate Jason's legs. But luckily, they managed to save his leg with surgeries, uh, special braces and casts. So we were very, very relieved.
I did not dare to ask the doctor if I'll be able to walk again because that would be a reality that I would, wouldn't dare to face. When I was discharged after 44 days approximately, I came back home in a wheelchair and recovery for me was definitely very rough in the first few months, especially the first two. Uh, because the burns were still fresh. So my mom had to quit her job so she could take care of me. I needed her to bring me to the toilet to you know, do my big business. I also needed her to shower me. It's like, now the aunties are like, yeah, she showered you before, I should see you with naked before. Then I'm like, it's not the same. <laughs> so it's a lot of my pride, my independence, my dignity. And so that's why I felt really lonely. So all in all, it took me one and a half years to recover. I just try to keep focusing on like the present, right? Like it just took things in my stride. You know what? Like just let me take it one day at a time, one day at a time. After I got well, instead of pursuing a degree, a nine to five job, I decided to really take what I've learned and give it to the world, give it back. I thought, you know, what's the best way to share my story? So I thought, you know, why not write, write a book to piece the puzzle together. I do not remember still to this day like, what had happened that night. By an incredible stroke of luck, uh, I was told by my pastor's friend Craig that he knows a witness. So hi Dory. So Dory. Hi. <laughs> we are going to, where are we going now? The site where it happened. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Alright, here we go, let's go. of the accident, but there is still one missing piece of the puzzle. Who was the guy that hit me? Why did he hit me? <laughs> was it intentional? Was it not intentional? for me is most people might be afraid uh, to visit the past again there's a lot of grief and a lot of trauma but I think I'm past all of that you know now it's, it's some time has passed since then and I think I just really want closure I just really want to meet this guy and really speak to him and just put this chapter of our lives away Yeah. Yeah. I thought he would just be this angry, drunk guy. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm surprised. I was very surprised. Can you tell me what happened that night? Can you tell me what happened that night? Can you tell me what happened that night? So during the conversation, I found out that he was oblivious to him knocking down anybody in the first place. Uh, but he was the guy that I crashed into. Come on the ground. Your head down, leg up. I plug chair. And start burning. Chair fire. Oh. He thought you were dead alive. 
I don't remember the accident. I don't remember the pain. Some kind of don't pay attention. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> let's, let's forget it. So, having met Mr. Wahid, I really do believe he's a sincere man and there's no way that he intentionally wanted to hurt me. So during the meeting, I show him my scars, um, lifted up my shirt and I show him my scars on my legs and there was this sense of regret in his face and I was appreciative, you know, that he, he showed some remorse. I told him it's okay. I told him he's forgiven. So with that, I want to give you this book. Uh, this is a book about my story. We really want to inspire the world for people to really... Their life is short and so people must live to the fullest. <laughs> After talking to him, I really feel there's a sense of closure and I'm ready to move on to the next big thing. Jason,